Joining us now, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Jason Chaffetz. Congressman, let's go back to the astonishing video from this week, which we've been looking at repeatedly, of a postal worker flying down the National Mall, highly restricted Area 56, and landing on the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol. NORAD, the FAA, the Secret Service, uh, the Capitol Police all have jurisdiction. Uh, who do you hold responsibility, uh, responsible for the security breach, sir? Well, one of the problems is you have 32 federal agencies or 32 law enforcement agencies, I should say, within Washington, D.C., with some degree of jurisdiction. And so you worry about the coordination and the communication, but certainly the Capitol Hill Police, the United States Secret Service, which were evidently uh, notified well in advance. This person had foreshadowed that they were going to come in and do this. Uh, but then you need to be, have visibility. And so you look at NORAD and, and just uh, the basic flight control coming out of Reagan about whether or not you can see what's coming uh, towards the airport and towards the National Mall. Your staff is drafting a letter to the Secret Service, which, as you point out, had interviewed this fellow twice because he had put out on the Internet the fact that he was thinking about doing this as far back as 2013. What else is your committee considering doing to try to rectify this situation? Well, they're going to be giving us a briefing to myself and Elijah Cummings, the Oversight Committee, and other committees that want to join us. That's going to happen. We needed a few days for them to sort out their story. But the Tampa Bay Times had reported, and evidently, at least in their reporting, had said that they had called the Capitol Hill Police, called the Secret Service 30 minutes prior. Now, I can tell you, as a member of Congress, we usually get an alert if something's going to happen at the Capitol. That never happened that day. All we got was the all clear at the end. And so I got a lot of questions about what did they do, who communicated with who, and, and what are they going to do about it? Because, unfortunately, Chris, that aura of inevitability that that law enforcement will prevail if somebody jumps over a fence or has a drone or has a gyrocopter, that, that shine has gone away. And so, unfortunately, I think we're going to have more and more of this. So what are they going to do about it? As you point out, this is the latest in a long line of security lapses. Just last month in March, a, two Secret Service agents drove into an active bomb investigation near the White House last September. Of course, that man jumped the fence and actually got into the White House. Chairman, I've got to ask you, and I know he's been up before your committee, do you still have confidence in Secret Service Director Joseph Clancy? Well, before when the fence jumping incident happened, there was an independent panel put forward by the, the director or the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security. Unanimously, they said they wanted somebody from the outside who could be that transformative figure to really change the Secret Service. Mr. Clancy is a wonderful human being, but he isn't that transformative person. So I got real, I have real concerns about it. Remember, a woman drove up outside the White House, dropped off what she said was a bomb, and then she just drove off. There wasn't this net that took her down and captured her. It took him two days just to capture this, this uh, deranged woman, evidently. And, and, and how does that happen time and time again in this day and age? Well, you say you have serious concerns. I, let me press the point. Are, are you, do you think we need a new Secret Service director, especially given the failure of the Secret Service in this latest case? Well, we're going to give them a chance this week to come in and explain what it is they knew, what sort of communication, were they in contact, uh, did they proactively decide not to take this person down? If they did want to take him down, what were they going to do about that? Uh, I have long said that I think that uh, Director Clancy was the wrong choice by President Obama, uh, but I have not called for him to be fired at this point or to, to step down. I have with the case of the, the DEA, uh, that we, the hearing that we had this week. But I got real concerns about what are they doing proactively and what are they going to do in the future, because this is going to happen again. I want to pick what you just mentioned, because you've had hearings in recent weeks, not just with the Secret Service, but also with the Drug Enforcement Administration. And that was over a case where it turned out that in Colombia, some DEA agents had been involved in so-called sex parties that were being paid for by the drug cartel that they were supposedly trying to police. And interestingly enough, both when you talk to Clancy of the Secret Service and also to the head of the DEA, they both told you they can't fire somebody just because of allegations of misconduct. Take a look at this. I don't have the ability to, to just fire people at will. In, in, in the government, I don't, my understanding is you cannot do that. Everybody else could be fired. Why can't you fire people that work for you? Under the civil service laws, I can't 
intervene in the disciplinary process. Chairman, is that true? Can't these people be fired? And can't you, if that is true, can't you do something about it? Well, what you can do and what you can inject yourself into is revoking these people's security clearances. And as was we heard testimony, if you don't have a security clearance, you can't work at the Secret Service. You can't work at the DEA. So I'm not buying it. Remember, after there was a high-profile incident uh, down in Columbia, they did fire a number of, of Secret Service agents, and they later fired some DEA agents. But when they were caught again, they hadn't done that. They had just literally given these people between 2 and 14 days paid leave. I mean, that sounds like a vacation to me. So I'm not buying that. Are there changes in law? We're going to look at making those changes. Chairman, I've got about 30 seconds left. Do you think that we're getting sloppy, that this many years after 9-11 we're letting down our guard? And what's the implication for national security? When you, tote, when you don't take somebody down and take them down hard, you say they were never getting to the Capitol. They're never getting in the White House. When you don't do that, guess what? You've got some real people and probably some more sophisticated terrorists who are going to take a shot at us. That can never, ever happen. These are no-fail missions. They can never, ever fail. And we've got to make sure that these agents and these people on the front lines know that we got their back. Take them down, even if it's harsh, and it won't happen again. Congressman Chavis, thank you. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you.